Hey, and welcome back. Um, this video is going to be about push rods. Um, there are six, six push rods that came with the SIG Cadet LT40. Two of the push rods are for the ailerons that go in the wing, and I'll show you those later uh, when I get to the wing. I want to talk about the push rods that go in the uh, rest of the airplane, into the fuselage. So, there are two push rods um, that are uh, 900 millimeters long. They're the same um, length, and they both have th threaded ends. And I just put a couple of nuts on the end so you can see that they're threaded. Okay? And one of these is for the um, elevator, and the other one is for the rudder. And so uh, they're easy to put in um, the airplane. You put them in basically from the front um, through the nose of the airplane, and go in, they go into a plastic tube and come out the other end. The rudder one might need a little help coming out. Um, might be a tight, <clears throat> a little bit of tight fit, so you might need to get a, um, a pair of tweezers or something and lift it up as you push it out uh, to the rudder. But they're easy to put in. <clears throat> and when you put them in, you need to take the um, nut off, obviously, but you're going to put the threaded end in first into the nose of the airplane. And so, because the threaded end uh, it's going to have the, the clevis on it, and I'll show you what a clevis looks like here. Okay, this is just uh, to show you a sample. So that clevis is going to be on the other, on the end where the control horns are for the rudder and the elevator. Uh, so um, take the wire with no clevis or nut on it, push it all the way through, and um, then you can. Uh, Install the, the clevis if you want. Um, uh, probably not yet. Maybe maybe I'll get to that point in another video. <clears throat> so you got two 900 millimeter long, and these are two millimeter wide um, rods. Uh, they're not American. They're they're metric system, and the nut and the uh, Threads are pitched for millimeters, so it's a two millimeter nut and two millimeter threads, um, which also means that you might not be able to find them. Because uh, I go to my local hobby store, I get uh, uh, American push rods and American uh, clevises and so forth. Uh, so they're not exactly compatible. If you if you were to look, this is the brighter shiny one is a American and this one is a um, uh, so this is the metric and this is the American or English and if you look at those two um, if you look at those two nuts carefully the American one is slightly larger you could measure it I'm not gonna but it's slightly larger but the threads won't work Okay, interchangeable. They're, they are not interchangeable. So, um, um, I usually have extra thread rods and clevises and stuff. Uh, I keep my own little supply of spare parts around. Um, and so, the, the, the two long ones are easy to put in, not a problem. But they are metric. The... Uh, the next push rod has a Z-bend already on it, and it's not threaded at the other end, and this is for the nose wheel uh, steering. And then the last push rod is threaded on the end for a clevis, uh, and has a plastic tube that it slides in, okay? And this is for the throttle. Uh, the, the throttle, you got to make sure it never binds. the, the the um, uh, uh, you don't want the thing to bend when it's pushing. You want good, accurate throwing of of the throttle. And so, when we get to putting these in, I'll show you uh, what we have to do to do that. Um, uh, the 
the throttle is um, um, this um, plastic tube does need to be fixed. It can't be sliding around in the in the cabin while this is sliding around too. So when we go to install this, you'll see that this has to have some be fixed, either glue or hot melt glue or something like that. This is gonna the plastic has to be fixed. The um, the plastic tubing for the rudder and elevator are already in place. You don't have to worry about that, but they are fixed in place. And I don't know if they use CA or hot melt. I may use CA, I may use hot melt. Well, I'll decide that when I get to it. Um, so let me explain one more thing um, about connectors. Okay, the connectors that came with the Cadet LT40 uh, were um, um, metal clevises, except for a plastic clevis for the um, uh, for the throttle. Not sure why they did that. What they did. Um, I'm not real happy with plastic clevises because the plastic clevis, the little pin in there is plastic and it can break and I don't like that. So I'm probably going to use a metal clevis there and um, we'll see how that works. Make sure you always, your, plastic, your clevises have a piece of tubing on them. It's basically just um, fuel tubing on it and you slide that up and that locks the clevis in place at the top. That's what it's for. Um, the kind of clevises that you buy at the local hobby store, you can probably find the metric one somewhere online, but the hobby store probably never carries them. Maybe you got a real good hobby store that does, but mine doesn't. And um, so when you go to buy a clevis at the hobby store, it's going to be something like this package of 12. And uh, they're going to be, they say the size there is 2 56. That's the 2 56 is a uh, English American standard. And um, um, the Sullivan um, clevises don't come with the um, uh, fuel tubing. What they come with is a little metal clip that looks like this. Okay. And that metal clip goes on um, the pin that's right there. That pin uh, has a little groove on it. And they want you to put that little clip on the end of the clevis to hold the clevis from coming open. Well, it's a pain. I don't like it. So I'm going to use um, fuel tubing to, for these if I, if I have to use these. And um, so the metal clevis is the best. Uh, obviously, the uh, other ways to connect it is a Z-bend. Okay, so that's a metal clevis with a Z-bend on the end. That was uh, um, one way to keep it. The other way that uh, comes in with the kit is this little plastic keeper, okay, that where you form an L and the plastic keeper holds it in place. Um, not too thrilled with that. If I'm going to have an L, I might as well have a Z um, and don't use the um, plastic uh, keeper. Um, you've um, uh, seen the screw lock connectors uh, that I've used on, on some of the uh, servo horns by now. Uh, those work well. Uh, you lock tight them in place and they're fairly secure. Um, um, so how you, how you connect the push rod to the servo arm, you got choices. And as I've said before, it depends upon the um, criticality of the, uh, of the control surface itself. Um, the um, elevator is the most critical um, control surface and so I always want to make sure that's secure and, and uh, I will always use a Z-Bend for the elevator 
uh, metal clevis on one end, Z bend on the other. Um, not always sure which uh, I use for the ailerons. Uh, the most secure would be a Z bend. Uh, otherwise, I might use the push rod uh, quick connects. And uh, let's see. So um, those are the types of connectors. And uh, uh, you'll get to see me do a Z bend uh, at some point in this uh, series of videos. Because certainly I'll do at least one for the um, uh, elevator. Even though in the instructions for the Cadet LT40 they use uh, uh, their own quick connect that comes with it. Their quick connect is difficult to use because you got two screws you got to lock together. I like the quick connects that uh, uh, you've seen before. Um, so that's it about push rods and uh, uh, we'll move on to the next video. Thank you.